Hey, what's up guys? JC Sense here on the blog channel. And uh, today we are gonna be redoing, wow, that person looked rough. We are gonna be redoing my home network and we're gonna be installing a uh, physical VPN as well as a virtual, well, virtual VPN, but we're gonna be using a VPN service. Because uh, Tech Talk keeps getting brought down by a DDoSer. Now, I don't know if they just think I'm stupid and don't know. They've been actually doing it now for a couple months, actually. Um, been able to divert some of the attack. Uh, some internal stuff on the modem's been able to help a little bit, but yeah, the other attacks are still inevitably too big. So we are going to be doing what we need to do to fix that. Also too, I am doing this today on the on the iPhone and not on my handheld camera, so it's, it's a little shaky and the audio sucks really bad, I apologize. Now I'm actually heading down to Fry's Electronics in Anaheim, and so that's where we're picking up some of the physical stuff I need to do. I need to redo my wireless bridges, so I'm taking the opportunity of doing the VPN as also an excuse to redo the entire home network because my network is pretty bad, it's pretty janky. Wireless on the thing is super slow, um, and intranet and uh, the actual LAN is really fast, but the wireless is terrible and a lot of the devices in my house connect wireless. Another thing I'm going to do while I'm there is I'm going to buy a suction cup mount for the cell phone for the windshield because then I can do more of these car vlogs again without having to handhold the phone because uh, although it's not like I'm doing anything dangerous right now with the way I have the phone like stuck up on the steering wheel, I just would like to be 100% hands free. I love fries, I could stay in here all freaking day. So I mentioned in the car I needed a new wireless. So this is what we're gonna get to kind of beef up the wireless in the house. We're gonna go with wireless AC. I've been running a couple of bridged uh, Net Netgear N600s for about the last four and a half years. And they definitely are showing their age. So here's what we're gonna get. We're going with the Netgear Nighthawk X6. We've heard that this is an amazing router. And uh, I think we'll just go ahead and use this as our central access point and see how it does. So I'm actually looking at some laptops while I'm here because the wife needs a new laptop. She's been running a 13-inch MacBook Pro since 2009, and it's definitely dated. She's having a hard time wanting to make the switch to PC. I'm having a hard time finding a PC laptop worth buying, to be honest with you. I want to try and get her into some gaming, like Minecraft or something, that she can just like fart around on. And I need to make sure that whatever I get her has discrete graphics. What's funny is... Uh, some people have already run into me here at the store and be like, hey Jay, I know who you are and blah, 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 I love your videos. And they're surprised to see me shopping for hardware. They just assume anything I want, I just write an email and I get it. The reality is I could probably write an email and get a laptop, but I'm, I don't operate that way. I am still a customer and a consumer. So I'm having a hard time finding one that fits the bill for her. And I'm tempted to just buy her another MacBook, but I have a really hard time spending two grand on a MacBook that has terrible specs and doesn't even have wireless AC, it's wireless N, it has only like four or six gigabytes of, of RAM, doesn't even have discrete graphics. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be a part of that Apple mentality of we're going to pay more because it's Apple even though the specs suck. Okay, I spent way too much time in there and this cart is very, very loud. And there's my baby. Yeah, I spent way too much time in there. I, I've got the gym today at four o'clock and I wanna make sure that I uh, have plenty of time to get this network done, because I I don't need to technically get it done before I go to the gym, but right now the internet's completely down, the modem is out, the modem's getting swapped out for a, a different modem, and the longer that that's out, then the wife and the kid and stuff can't go on the internet, and it's Friday, so of course, everybody should get to go on the internet on the weekend, right? I mean, it's, that's kind of tragic if you can't go on the internet during the weekend. So obviously I got a suction cup mount. I don't know how bouncy it's gonna be. The car is kind of rough. It's not the, uh, it's not exactly the most uh, smooth riding car, if you will, at least not with how stiff the suspension is right now. Uh, but I didn't buy the wife a laptop. I, I don't think it's something I should buy without her here. Cause then it's just me buying what I want her to have and I want her to have what she wants. So I need her to be around to buy it, I guess, if that makes sense. So let's take a minute to talk about the DDoSing. Um, there was a lot of comments on Twitter along the lines of, Jay, why are people DDoSing you? Why? Why? Well, that's just what people do. When they're bored and they have access to a button, all you have to do to DDoS someone is literally have their IP address, PayPal account, and a button. And that button is just whatever service you end up using a DDoS service. You know how there's VPN services out there? There's also 
DDoS services out there. And what happens is you simply say, I want to knock this person offline and you can push a button and start the DDoS attack and then stop it and start it whenever you want. So it takes really no skill whatsoever and uh, it's just really annoying because the problem with DDoSing, it's not as much the DDoSers as it is the ignorant people out there. And by ignorant, I don't mean like, man, you ignorant. I mean ignorant, literally lack of knowledge in a certain subject is ignorance. And it's not a bad word, by the way, when I say ignorant. But there's a lot of ignorant people out there who don't know that they're infected with these viruses and these, these, these scripts and stuff on their machine that are activated by these DDoS attacks. So what happens is somebody goes onto a, onto a botnet or the dark net or wherever you can rent access to this and all these computers are infected. These people don't know they're infected, but as long as their computer is online and connected to the internet, or powered on and connected to the internet, if someone pushes a button, then this central server basically that controls the botnet sends out a signal to all these machines and says, start sending packets, request packets of information to this IP. So you'll get machines from all over the world, thousands of machines, all pinging the same computer or IP address which is how people get knocked offline. And this is really bouncy. I'm gonna to have to fix that. So I apologize now. But anyway, that's the problem is it took years and years and years for these for these botnets to appear because it takes time for this massive army of machines that are infected without their owners knowing it. In fact, I'm gonna fix that now. That's super, that's super annoying. All right, so that should be a little better. Anyway, it takes years of these machines of, you know, getting infected to grow and grow and grow to where there's more machines, more machines, and more machines to where it becomes super effective because it typically takes, you know, thousands of, of machines sending these requests to bring down big servers like EA and, and DICE or, you know, they're, they're EA and DICE are the, really the same, but World of Warcraft Blizzard servers were taken down. Uh, major Minecraft servers were taken down. Streamers are taken down pretty easy. You're dealing with real, uh, you know, residential bandwidth of, of broadband, which isn't very big. So the problem is, DDoSers wouldn't exist if people took care of their machines and made sure that they were virus-free. Because somebody will torrent or download something, and they'll go, oh, I got this movie, or I got this song, or well, I've got this porno now, and I got it for free, yay, but they don't realize embedded deep within the file structure of those files that they torrented just infected their machine. And then when they start seeding and sharing files to other people, it just spreads like a freaking plague. And then DDoSers were born because these machines were now controllable through simple scripts. That's why they're referred to as like script kitties and stuff, you know, people who really have no experience whatsoever in hacking or DDoSing, they literally go to a website and push a button and pay a fee if you don't control it anyway, if you're not a, if you're not an admin on these bot servers. So that's what DDoSing is. And when you get to a certain level of exposure, whether it be through Twitch or YouTube or whatever it may be, then people will simply, especially live streamers, it doesn't, people don't DDoS someone that they can't see the results. So it's always live streamers that get affected because of the fact that they can see the fruits of their button pushing immediately. They can be like, oh, okay, hey, look, I'm pushing this button and this stream is gonna go down in a couple of minutes. I have some in in instant satisfaction of taking this person offline or whatever. And this is why I said I took way too long in fries because uh, Friday afternoon traffic leaving Orange County is kinda shitty. Yeah. Damn it. Well, that actually worked out for the better, I guess. Uh, my personal trainer just texted me and said he's not feeling too well, so we're going to be canceling our lifting session today. Uh, I guess I'll take a moment to talk about the Go Team J effort because I haven't been posting as much Go Team J stuff, and that's not because I'm being less active or less healthy than I was before. It just really has come down to my schedule has gotten incredibly busy again. Uh, so anyway, I'm not cycling as much as I was before. I've really been down to about one day a week and that's bugging me but that has one thing to do with the heat and the air quality where I live during the summer is terrible I was going for rides out in the 100 plus degree heat which is fine temperature wise but the smog here is so bad my lungs would just be on fire by the time I came home and I felt worse after the ride for days uh, because of breathing all this unclean air so what I've done is I bumped up 
more days at the gym and more personal training sessions with my trainer who we're doing uh, we're doing power lifting with because now we're going to rebuild some of the muscle that I lost uh, by losing so much weight. I mean, I lost 70 pounds this year. I'm still kind of plateaued right around 239 pounds, uh, which is fine, man. My height's 6'4". You guys can see I'm, I'm pretty fit now. Most people still don't believe I weigh about 240 pounds, but I'm a really tall, really big, thick guy, especially in the head. You know, I've been doing, um, I've been doing four, well, I've been doing three gym sessions uh, a week with the personal trainer and at least one riding day. So that's four days a week that I work out pretty hard. Uh, and my intake, my food intake is still pretty low. Um, I need to get back onto a more strict clean eating regimen. We've had more cheat meals, uh, but I haven't been gaining any weight back because I've got things pretty much in check right now to where I'm in more of a maintenance mode. Uh, but I do want to lose about another 10 or 15 pounds and then call it a day on the on the fat loss. Uh, but anyway, I, I do uh, honestly appreciate all of the support you guys have given me. I'm, I'm glad that finally, for the first time in my life, I have control over my weight. That I'm 34 years old, but I, I'd rather get control over it later than never. Uh, but it wasn't a hard decision for me to finally turn my life around when it comes to the weight. I started realizing I was putting a lot of weight back on. I had lost down well below 300 pounds before and then was slowly creeping back up. And it got to the point to where I was realizing that if I didn't do something about it, uh, I wasn't going to see my daughter graduate high school. I wasn't going to see uh, her get married, uh, let alone my youngest daughter. I wouldn't have seen any of that stuff. I know for a fact I was going to be doing a ton of damage to my body. Uh, and, and was taking years off my life every year I was I stayed heavy so the, the motivation was pretty easy uh, but the support you guys gave on Twitter and on the blog channel here was overwhelming and it made it a lot easier so I just want to take a minute to kind of talk to you guys and let you know that uh, we're still on track um, you saw you know when I was over with meeting with Jerry and, and a lot more uh, video and photos of me out and about. Um, I've I've got things pretty much under control up here, though. I, I got this under control, which made the weight loss really just a side effect. I think I think where a lot of people fail at the uh, the idea of weight loss is they treat the weight as the problem rather than the symptom. And I finally realized that attacking the weight as the solution. It's the wrong way to go about it. You're, you're going to lose weight initially, but you're going to fail in the long run most of the time because of the fact that whatever caused you to gain your weight is the problem. So whether that be depression or uh, anxiety, disability, whatever, the weight gain is rarely the actual problem and it is a symptom. It is a symptom of a bigger problem. And that's the part that people who've never struggled with their weight will never understand. But hopefully they can at least understand that I'm sure they've struggled with something. Maybe it's smoking, maybe it's gambling, alcoholism, whatever. Every single person on this planet, I don't care who you are, and if you say you don't, you're a liar. Every single person on this planet struggles with some sort of addiction, even if it's small. I don't care if it's you're addicted to Starbucks coffee, you're addicted to tea. It may seem like the most minuscule thing. You're addicted to biting your fingernails. Everyone on this planet is addicted to something. Some people just have it worse than others. And some people would like to say that uh, fat people are fat because they're addicted to food. More often than not, they are not addicted to food. Food is a coping mechanism because you eat something that's tasty, you eat something that's high in fat or high in sugar and it tastes good and it triggers something in your brain to say pleasure. And that is where a person who struggles with their weight knows that they have that problem. But you can't just undo that. And a person who's never struggled with their weight or never struggled with the euphoria you feel when you eat something that's super bad for you, you won't get it. But I've never been addicted to smoking. So I don't understand why a smoker can't just put down that cigarette. You're addicted to smoking, you're smoking three packs a day, what? just put the cigarette down, bro, what the hell? Just put it down. Why can't you just put it down? That's what you're telling, that, that's what you sound like when you tell a fat person, just stop eating. 
just don't eat that shit. Not quite so easy when you put it in that perspective, isn't it? You're addicted to internet porn. Bro, stop spanking it to the computer screen. But if you're addicted to it, then you're like, but I can't. And, and it doesn't matter what it is. Everybody has some sort of addiction. And I just wanted to kind of put that out there. I think that's because of the, the heels of the whole Nicole Arbor thing. I mean, she's obviously addicted to bad humor and bad taste. You can't just tell her, Nicole, stop trying to be funny. Because she's never going to stop trying to be funny. Because that's just the way that, well, she's programmed. You know, bad hair dye, plastic tits, and bad attitude. I mean, that's just her. So anyway, that was just a, a moment for me to, to kind of rant here. And I'm noticing that the sun comes in on my windshield and puts quite the quite the glare. So I'll have to figure this out. This, this windshield on my Z is a much more <laughs> aggressive slope versus the Altima and other cars that have much more straight up and down windshield. Anyway, probably we're going to end this vlog now. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, a lot of you guys seem really excited. A lot of you guys seem really excited that I'm doing this again. And it, I'm having fun with it and it gives me a chance to really kind of connect with you guys again. So anyway, thanks for hanging out. If you're not subscribed to this channel, why don't you go ahead and stick around. If not, we'll see you on the tech channel or on the, on the Twitter and stuff. See you guys later.